Hey everybody, it's Patrick Lovell coming at you on um, Wednesday, October 12th at approximately 2.30 p.m. my time and breaking news. The verdict and the judgment against Alex Jones is now weighing in at north of a billion dollar settlement to the Sandy Hook families for his incessant 10 years of lying and deception and libel against the horrific tragedy of Sandy Hook where these families, these parents, who lost their children to the most horrific scenario imaginable were then attacked by Alex Jones and Alex Jones followers that they made that whole thing up and were part of a false flag operation for the government to steal their guns. Now, I've thought about this whole thing on, on so many levels, but the thing that's relevant today is ultimately this sort of parallel. I am not Alex Jones. Alex Jones, through his own self incrimination, told the world in the previous trial in Austin that his entire business model was to basically look online for two hours a day and then use his bombastic behavior to basically stir up his audience because he was giving them what they wanted to hear, which I believe and my theory is that when things got so bad in this country after 9-11, after everything that led to Iraq, after uh, ultimately the 2008 great financial crisis, that people literally went insane, that they couldn't tell which side was up because the entire system was lying to them. So why wouldn't Alex Jones do what he did? Now me, my way of doing things was I went deep and I did the investigations of which I put tens of thousands of hours into revealing the largest criminal conspiracy and cover up in history that never ended so that I could arrive at a point to tell you that Federal Reserve Act 13.3 was used illegally, and when you get to that point, you understand the emperor's new clothes. Now, ultimately, our project had to literally uh, elevate and uh, cross the T's and dot the I's uh, to get past three top legal firms to be able to make sure that we could distribute what we put into the con at www.thecon.tv because we didn't want to be held for libel. And we were, of course, trying to land on a major network, of which, unfortunately, they're all owned by the system that we reveal. But here's the scenario. So thank God there's some justice, even though there is nothing that could replace the loss and the, tragic, the tragedy of what befell these families at Sandy Hook. But, of course, it's good for us to be able to hold somebody like um, Alex Jones accountable but let's think about the timing of this in terms of some good news that I want to bring to your attention that sets this whole thing into stark contrast. So another reason why a lot of this stuff I believe is coming to a head right now with Alex Jones is because he was deeply immersed in also uh, his role in the insurrection. The government's coming down on Trump. They're, they're, they're framing him like I've told you for what he's done, creating fraud against the United States of America. But all of media is actually representing that if you take down Trump, you solve the problem. Meanwhile, I have been telling you that the real coup d'etat took place in 2009 as a result of Federal Reserve Act 13.3. There were 16 million filed foreclosures that affected over 50 million people that got set up and bulldozed illegally, leading to tens of thousands of divorces, suicides, homelessness, and just train wreck carnage that people have never recovered from because the system continued to do what it did as a result of pouring trillions upon trillions of dollars into illegal, sorry, bankrupt, fraudulent criminal enterprises that our government covered up. Now, how can I speak so declaratively? Well, because I did the work and I did what I told you. I crossed the T's, dotted the I's, got through the, you know, the meat grinder of having to prove everything to these major law firms, these entertainment law firms, so that we could actually distribute this so we wouldn't be held liable. <clears throat> I would go on Rachel Maddow, Anderson Cooper, uh, Tucker Carlson tomorrow. I, I've always been, uh, for, for a long time, trying to be, uh, you know, bring this attention to Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan hasn't gotten to this story for whatever reason. I have a friend who's a friend and d d done all sorts of work with Joe Rogan, and he tells me, unless you've got 5 million followers, Joe Rogan's not even looking at you. Okay, so there's that. But then you've got a guy like Russell Brand, for example, who I think is a very intelligent guy, a beautiful guy. I love to listen to him. His, 
you know, his his words are like, you know, like like a poem. It's poetry. His genius in terms of his verbal verbalization skills are absolutely extraordinary. But Russell Brand doesn't understand the details and the facts of what I spent years and thousands and thousands of hours and millions of dollars aggregating to put together so that the American people would know the truth of the largest criminal conspiracy and cover up in history that never ended. When you have the truth, you're bulletproof. We're in a sea of lies and madness where mainstream created so much distortion and mis mis misrepresentation and quite frankly, distraction and so on and so forth that it would bevy the way forward for somebody like Alex Jones to prey on people who did not know which side is up. What I am trying to do above all else is what's on display, and this is the good news that I wanted to tell you off the heels of this tragedy slash somewhat justice being uh, brought forth in this particular case uh, as it relates to Alex Jones, but ultimately what we're doing at the Federal Reserve, we got approved for the permits to march at the Federal Reserve on 11-1-2022, which is the 10-year anniversary of quantitative easing, which Timothy Geithner told us, the former Treasury Secretary of the United States, that the American people were going to be foam on the runway for the crashing financial system. Well, our, our efforts are to bring all of the people that represent the foam on the runway who had their lives destroyed. And by the way, there were 16 million filed foreclosures in 2012. That affects over 50 million people. If 1% showed up, are you kidding me? But we're also going to do an online rally. Hopefully thousands, tens of thousands. Tell everybody, spread the word. The truth is marching because this is the resurrection of the American dream that was buried by the deception of this evil empire in the financial system that thinks that it can destroy the credibility, the integrity of the United States and get away scot-free. We are marching for justice and failure is not an option. And unlike the insurrection, this resurrection is a peaceful protest. And I'll put this in stark contrast as well. We're not going to fly in millions of people from around the country like the freaking insurrection movement did because billionaires got a whole bunch of military guys and police guys so that they could go out to the insurrection in the Capitol with guns, you know, to create a violent insurrection using weapons. I think I just found out that a whole bunch of them were walking around with uh, AR-15s and so forth, which certainly doesn't surprise me, given everything that was going on in courthouses with the militias around the country before that happened. But that's not us. You know who's going to show up uh, as foam on the runway for the crashing financial system? Mostly women and African-American elderly people. The most vulnerable people in society that got crushed, that got set up by this. And I guess my last statement is, you know, I happened to just catch a great interview last night with The Rock. You know, The Rock, they, they continue to ask him if he's going to run for president. Honestly, given the whole scope and how things work, I would vote for The Rock in a second. The guy's a great guy. He's a great human being. Does he have any experience in uh, politics? No. But is he a good human being and a strong human being and somebody who would probably make the right choices because he's just that kind of guy? I think he would. But he's got this new uh, superhero film out called Black Adam, which he talked about last night as, you know, this new superhero character that's built into the revelations of like, what, hundreds of years of slavery and a projection of that in a fictional way. But his mind is in the right place. His heart's in the right place. Have you ever seen uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson's father? Unbelievable, spectacular uh, athlete, professional athlete, who just happened to be an African-American. Had the biggest biceps I've ever seen in my life. I, I think they're even bigger than The Rock's. But the bottom line is that The Rock needs to understand Addie Polk and the insanity of the um, uh, engineering of predation on starting with African Americans, and then that got the rest of the United States, okay? And that then ultimately, once it bulldozed everybody, gave trillions of dollars to the guys who did it. Think about that in terms of a theme for a film. Do you think The Rock might wanna know this stuff? So please, spread it high and low. Spread it everywhere you can. This has gotta seep through the system that is trying to uh, you know, cancel this information. Like I said, I've got nothing but facts, nothing but evidence, Everybody in the con, for example, with the top-level whistleblowers and also the top-level guys from the FBI, the Department of Justice, the Securities and Exchange Commission, and AGs around the country. When you have the truth, you're bulletproof. 
And I've been saying over and over and over, and I got to believe this till my dying day. The truth has got to have more value than the sea of lies that have overwhelmed this country's ability to manage it. The people, we the people, have got to march for a resurrection of the American dream. Onwards and upwards.